March 12th and 13th, 2009. Madison Square Garden, New York, New York. Syracuse versus Connecticut. Here's the thing about Syracuse's epic six overtime victory over Connecticut. It was inches from never happening. Shot of the horn, Dievendorf, he might have got it. It's good, it's good for the win. And Dievendorf steps on the press table. If he got it off in time, it was nothing but net for Eric Dievendorf. And the Orange oh. may have pulled off another oh. here at the Garden. But the shot didn't count. Dievendorf's amazing three-pointer was waved off after replay showed his fingertips still graced the ball as the horn sounded at MSG. It was on to overtime, which was just the beginning of this night. You know, I remember the last shot, um, the ball bouncing right next to me, Gavin Edwards, he was, he was I think he was to the left of me, uh, came right to me, right when I got it, put it right up, I knew it had a chance when I see it come off my, uh, come off my hands and uh, when it went, went in, obviously I thought it was good because I wouldn't have jumped on the table. In the first overtime, Connecticut led by four with a minute 31 to go, but Andy Routon said a three. Johnny Flynn went coast to coast, dumping off a pass to Rick Jackson for a dunk with just four seconds to go to tie the game. Walker double pump shot not close, and we're headed to double overtime here at Madison Square Garden <laughs> as we hit the midnight hour in Gotham. How can it get better than this? In the second overtime, Connecticut had four field goal attempts in the last 35 seconds, but was unable to connect. Rebound Connecticut, they've got time, four seconds left. Robinson ahead, Walker from 40 at the horn, no! And OT3 is coming up. As the night at Madison Square Garden got longer and longer, enemies became friends. I noticed this kid next to me, he's probably 10 years younger than me or more, but he had all his UConn stuff on. And uh, we were kidding each other around, but by the second or third overtime, I think we both realized that this was a classic. UConn took a 93-87 lead in the third overtime, but Syracuse fought back again on a Paul Harris jam and a clutch Routens three that tied it. Foul line left, three for Routens. It's good! He ties it with 11-7 to go. It's 98 all. This is insanity at the Garden. After three overtimes, Ryan, our strength coach and I, we were talking about when we win, how are we preparing for the next day? So that's some, some of the discussion that, you know, when we win is the, some of the discussion that he and I were having. What are we going to do? Are we going to deviate from our plan that we normally have in the tournament? Or are we going to uh, just keep it with the way we usually do things? And that's the, the, the big thing. Because Otto has to embody the spirit, you can imagine what it was like in Madison Square Garden at that moment. So with every overtime, even though we're completely exhausted, it is so incredibly exciting because you know that this is going to be some sort of record-setting game as the overtime after overtime after overtime. In the fourth overtime, with Christoph Anjanat and Arenze Anawaku already fouled out, Rick Jackson earned his fifth foul and joined them on the bench. Five overtimes, and I did not stutter. It's 104 all. The Madison Square Garden music staff was unbelievably on point, you know, as they continued to play, you know, after midnight, we're gonna let it all hang. Uh, late in the evening, Simon and Garfunkel. In the fifth overtime, Dievendorf fouled out, forcing Syracuse coach Jim Beheim to go deep on his bench. Into the game came walk-on Justin Thomas. At the horn, OT six, it is a six pack at the garden, tied at one, <laughs> 10. It was in that six overtime that Syracuse did something for the first time in all these extra sessions. They took a lead. Andy Routon's big three ball, got it oh for the first lead in overtime. Outside the lane left, it's Harris, turns to face, puts on the deck, spins to the basket. This time he finishes, and the Orange lead by five. Johnny Flynn dribbles out the clock into the front court. Two seconds left, now one, and all it took was six. Six oh. overtimes, and the Orange outlasts Connecticut. Syracuse defeated UConn 127-117 in six overtimes. The game began at 9.36 p.m. on March 12th and ended at 1.22 a.m. in the wee morning hours of March 13th. 244 points were scored, 226 minutes were played, an instant classic was born. Uh, I, can't, I can't even feel my legs right now. Um, you know, it was, it was a tough game. We battled it out. It's just, it's just great that we got the victory. You know, the tensions were already high going in, and then so now we add in, you know, the Big East tournament, Madison Square Garden. 
Syracuse, UConn, the fan base. It's 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 you know Syracuse is New York team, but but UConn, Hartford, they're like an hour and a half from the city. You know what I mean? So it's real close, and and, and both fan bases, you know, they they show out. So um, you know, it's it was the perfect setup. So it's 1:30 in the morning in New York City, and you just watched one of the most epic college basketball games of all time. What do you do now? It was no big deal. It was you know two o'clock, and it may as well have been nine or ten. And we walked down the street and had chicken figures and a couple of beers and, yeah. and uh, get back to the hotel at 4 a.m. And it was perfectly reasonable for people to be out and walking around the, the hotel at 4 a.m. John and Chris Grill of local t-shirt company Holy Shirt got an idea in the wee hours of the morning after the game that became the best-selling t-shirt in the history of Syracuse, New York. When that game ended, uh, it was completely amazing. Um, I'd never seen anything like it before. And uh, I was out of breath. Uh, my voice was shot, uh, and I was exhausted. Um, I called my brother and said, I feel like I've just run a marathon. Um, we got to do a shirt for this. And uh, we riffed a little bit. Chris came up with the phrase, Marathon Men, and uh, he continued to work on it after that. Syracuse's win over Connecticut at Madison Square Garden on March 12th and 13th, 2009, will live on forever as one of the great college basketball games of all time. And to think, it was about a half second away from being just another buzzer beater. Would have been a lot better if they just counted Eric's shot and we could have gone home two hours ago. But uh... Th Those are the memories that I specifically, more so from the game, it was just after what, what we were doing. I just remember everybody being like, man, what, what a crazy game. Just, just mentally and emotionally just exhausted. And then the next night, play West Virginia in the garden, going to overtime again you know, and, and end up winning that game. So people don't, people don't realize that, you know, it was, it was like three games in two days.